Do you remember the first time you heard metal music? Well, that 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 is that thought is quite blurry. That I, I started listening to bands like Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit and stuff like that when I was really really young. I mean, I would consider that metal, but I, I specifically remember the first time that I wanted to be a vocalist is when I where our bass player David, his wife Louise, and we all went to the same high school together. And his wife Louise let me hear the Great Summer Drink Kill by Pantera. And when I heard that opening scream, that was the moment I was just like, this is fucking awesome. And that is what I want to do. That was that's the that's the, like the defining moment for me, remembering wanting to be a vocalist. Mm. Was it the the screaming that kind of attracted you to towards metal, or was there something else? No, I think it was more of the screaming and obviously the aggression and the music and stuff so but I knew from that moment that I wanted to be a vocalist so I guess it's from the screaming yeah did you uh, immediately pick up on like screaming or did you start singing melodically first or how did it go for you no it was it was screaming first like I didn't really start thinking about doing more of the melodic I wouldn't really say I sing I would say Stephen does most of the singing in the band but my layers on top of the like in the choruses and stuff the layers that I add are more like pitched screaming so I'm like screaming in the melody as opposed to just clean singing that didn't really start coming until our album era is when I started to dabble more with that style of vocals just I wanted to just try something new and push myself because before that I was only screaming and I was just I don't want to say I was getting bored of it I just really wanted to try and push myself and I guess that was maybe the next step. And I feel like the way uh, Craig, the guitar player, his songwriting was going, I feel I felt like the songs almost needed that in a sense. So it was just a natural progression, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Did you have any sort of idols from both of both of the worlds? You know, you mentioned Linkin Park and stuff like that. You know, Fred Durst, of course, you know, a rapper, singer, you however you look at. Did you have like screamer idols and singer idols? Who and who were those idols for you? Um, I guess like one of the first like really big inspirations I had was Corey Taylor. Mm. Then that then the more that I started to like, you know, discover new bands, like what I remember specifically from when I was younger, one of my biggest inf- influences was always Howard Jones from Kill Switch Engage. Mm. I just thought he was like still to this day is I just think is one of the best how he transitions between his screaming and his singing and does both of them to such a high standard I just think still to this day he's he's got to be up there for me especially on those early Kill Switch albums and um, I would say one of my biggest influences would have to be Devin Townsend, mm. Randy Blythe, I've got loads, Peter Dolving from The Haunted, um, I've got so so many man it's just my mind has gone blank because there's so many yeah. people I could mention. True, there's uh, but, always man. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, did you encounter any problems when you first started? Did you have like, did you lose your voice or something? <coughs> no, I never as such lost my voice at any point until recently. Mm. We were doing our headline tour and I lost my voice on the last three shows of that tour. Which is strange because it's the first tour that we've ever done that I was actually looking after myself and I wasn't drinking. <laughs> I was like proper, like militant. I was in all the guys were downstairs having a beer after the show. I was in a in my bunk and the bus just going to sleep. And it's the only time ever in our career that I've lost my voice, mm. which is just <laughs> such a pain in the ass. But um, the one time I remember specifically having problems with my voice was when I stopped smoking cigarettes. I lost my voice. I couldn't scream as well after I stopped smoking cigarettes. I mean, obviously stopping smoking cigarettes is a great thing. But once, all I had to do after that was I changed my technique slightly and then my voice sounded better than it ever did. Mm. But genuinely, when I stopped smoking cigarettes, it took me a while to adjust my voice to to like not smoking I guess I don't know I don't know if it was um if those two things were related but I do remember that happening 
Yeah, like I, I'm not a voice teacher or something, but you know, you would think that if you start singing when you like smoke and do these things, and then when you stop doing those, your voice has to kind of adapt to the new you, so to speak. And you know, the same thing is when you're like, if you're like uh, losing weight, then your voice changes with that. So <coughs> I guess it's something like that. Yeah, it's just the body is a is a mysterious thing. It's, mm. I don't even know what I, what I meant by that, but you know what I mean. I, I know, yeah, and it's 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 your instrument, so it is quite yeah. mysterious. Uh, are you completely self-taught when it comes to singing, or did you take lessons, or do you take lessons? No, I've never taken lessons. I mean, I did have like at one point like a conversation with Dan Tompkins from Tesseract, and he was mm. trying to give me like point because that was at the point where I was. I was wanting to include more m melody in the vocals and he was trying to give me some, he was, well, he was giving me some pointers and it, they were very informative, but I just, I've never had like a proper vocal lesson as such. I've kind of always just um, learned things on instinct, I guess, mm. like listening to people that I like, I admire and just like not trying to emulate them, but you know, mm. like, I just think most of it is done on an instinct for me. I've just, I've never really, even still to this day, I don't know nothing about technique. I just know whatever I'm doing is not causing me any problems. And that's the only thing I know. But like, I, I have a few, like, occasionally I get people messaging me online asking if I would do vocal lessons and stuff, but I just, I don't feel like I'm qualified to give anyone, like, my opinion. I could give people my opinion, but I don't think I could teach someone how to do it because I don't understand the technicalities of what is going on here. I just know that whatever I'm doing is is um, not damaging for me, but everyone is different. Everyone's throat is a different shape. And so if I, if I teach someone how I do something, it could damage them. So I, I would rather stay away from that, to be honest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a wise thing. And you know, like you said, it, it's it's really the most important thing to not damage your voice. You know, I'm again, I'm not a teacher, but I would imagine that no matter how you produce the sound, as long as it doesn't damage your voice, because then you're going to be in the bigger trouble. Uh, how did you first discover your style? Because you were talking about, you know, finding your own, own way of doing things. <clears throat> I think I didn't actually discover my voice fully. Mm -hmm like until 2018 when we started recording mm -hmm. the album Era, I sort of changed my technique slightly on this album. And I think what I was doing before, like before all the albums previous to that was, I don't know, maybe I was, I definitely wasn't like, I, I, I have more of an understanding of how to control my voice now than I did back then. And I feel like when I listen to my voice back then, it just sounds like every other <laughs> vocalist out there. And, now, since 2018, I feel like I've really found my own sound and I have a better understanding of how to use it. So I would say probably 2018, mm. maybe 2017 when we started recording the album. But yeah. Yeah, well, that, well, that's good because, well, you found it now. You can do whatever you, you want from now on. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm not sure about whatever I want, but... <laughs> whatever you can, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> whatever I can. Yeah. Uh, do you remember uh, how your, like, maybe parents or people around you reacted when you first, you know, kind of expressed that, hey, I'm going to be this singer and I'm going to scream and growl and... Um, yeah, like, I don't really think my parents... Or my father, sorry. I don't really think my father still understands it mm. because he's... I don't know, he just doesn't understand that style of music, but he does he does think it's really cool everything we're doing and like he's always like checking up online and looking and every time we're in a magazine he goes and buys like three <laughs> copies of the magazine. <laughs> so our, our, and all of our parents are like that. So yeah, we've we've all got really supportive parents when mm. it comes even if they don't understand the music, they're all very supportive, which is amazing. Yeah, I guess that's that's how parents are, you know. They might not understand what they do, but as long as they support yeah. I guess. Yeah. So kind of, kind of when you started first touring, did you kind of what was it how you imagined voice wise? <clears throat> like 
when you, because obviously it's different when you're maybe at like your band space or whatever and singing there. But when you go on tour, you have to kind of perform almost every night and do all these things. Were you prepared for that or what, was there anything that surprised you? Um, again, I think I've, st- I've, I've got more surprised as I've gotten older. When we, we mm. started touring when we were really young, like I think we were like maybe 19, 20, early 20s. So back then you could you could play a show every night for months as well as drinking and just nothing affects you when you're when you're young. But as I, as I've gotten older, I am um, as I said on the last tour, I can start to feel it taking more of a toll in my voice. Maybe maybe I should just keep drinking alcohol every night. Just <laughs> a few, maybe yeah. maybe this maybe this is the the sensibly of course responsibly even uh, yeah, for your career <laughs> but maybe, maybe, maybe this is what soothes, soothes the throat I don't know but thankfully I've been very lucky that I've never really had any problems apart from this one thing mm. <clears throat> is there something besides you know you quitting smoking and you know not partying and drinking that much that you do to preserve your voice or to like help you help keep it in mm-hmm. shape yeah, I've, 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 when I'm on tour, I always try to drink like loads and loads of water and maybe like one hour to two hours before every show or before we go on stage even, I will do a warm-up, a warm-up routine. And I've, I'm, I've noticed like if there's been a few shows maybe where we're like running really last, like really late and we're arriving at the venue and having to go on stage, if I've not done my full proper warm-up, then I can, I can really feel that on my voice. Like, I'm not sure if it's just like, men, I can, if it's a mental thing or what I'm, <coughs> subconscious, sorry, but I'm, um, I, I feel like doing that is so important for your voice, especially for the longevity of like, like when you're trying to make your voice last for a full tour, I just feel like warming up your voice and warming down after a show as well is so important. Do can you describe what those uh, warm up and warming down routine routines are for you? I basically just run through like I start really really quietly with like humming, and then I just build that and build that to I get to the point where I'm pretty much at my level of screaming, which is really loud, and I just go through like a bunch of like scales and do like jaw exercises and breathing exercises, and then when I've done all that, I start to like quietly scream. And then I build that up to the volume. And then by the time I've done that, I feel like proper warmed up and ready to go. A lot of the stuff that I do use is on the the Melissa Cross DVD. Mm, yeah. Some stuff I take, some stuff I've taken from that, and then some stuff I've just sort of figured out myself over time. And yeah. Is it is it the ten of screaming or yeah? Yeah, I've heard good things yeah. about that DVD. Yeah. So kind of a maybe a weird question, but if you're a person like you who has like a heavy accent does it anyhow like influence the singing have you noticed like is there something because a lot of people kind of lose their accent when they're singing but is there some effect that you have noticed that it has no i think i think i've um naturally just i put on more of an accent when i'm when i'm singing because like when i was younger most of the most of the people that i looked up to and metal, like most of the vocalists that I looked up to in metal bands were all American. Mm. So I feel like my when I was learning, I was learning from listening to these guys and then yeah. and and girls, of course. Like one of my favorite vocalists was uh, Angela Gosso from Arch Enemy. Um, when I was listening to these vocalists, I was they almost had like an American accent. So I, I guess that just naturally started happening when I was singing. But I always do sometimes like to have like words here and there that are so Scottish like or pr- the way I pronounce them is so Scottish but that feels less natural than screaming in an American accent for some odd reason mm. yeah I, I understand Which, but <clears throat> yeah it's a good question because no one's ever asked me that before and I've never really thought about that before yeah it's and be- now, because now that yeah. I'm thinking that's yeah. strange it is because people usually lose their accent once they start st- singing because I guess it's I don't know, you know, I, I need to study that, but there there is something to it and it would be interesting to know. Sure. I, I would imagine that it probably is because of, you know, like the people you grew up listening to, most, like for me personally, like especially most of them are American. 
Mm. So I guess I've just naturally emulated that sound without without trying. And now if I tried to do a Scottish accent while, while screaming, it feels forced, which is so yeah. weird. Yeah, but I would imagine that something like a Scottish accent would fit aggressive music, you know, if we are going to like stereotypes or something. Or I don't know about yeah. stereotypes even. <laughs> so maybe. It's so strange. I've never thought about this before. Maybe I'm going to have to start doing this more. <laughs> it's your own style from now on. You're 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 the angry uh, Scottish screamer. <laughs> it's funny because between songs, like when I'm shouting at the crowd, I'm shouting in a Scottish accent. Mm. Like fucking come on. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest things about being Scottish is when we're on tour in like Europe or anywhere mainland Europe. I feel like people don't understand a word I'm saying when I'm speaking between songs. So I'm always like proper enunciating and trying to pronounce my words a lot clearer and it's, it's a challenge yeah but I would sure. I would imagine there are like even heavier accents than yours I, I've heard some that I absolutely cannot understand the word they're saying but I can well you know, understand you but if you hear me speaking to my bandmates you won't understand okay. the word <laughs> I, I trust this, you on that <laughs> this is me like trying Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll trust that. So, do you, do you have some final advice to singers who will like to become screamers like you? Um, I guess just like as cliche as this may sound, you you really do have to listen to your body because if you start and never start by at such a high volume start really quietly and build up when you feel it starting to get maybe painful stop and then this is not this this technique is not working for you but genuinely I feel like the most important thing is just to listen to your body listen to what your what your body's trying to tell you because if it's painful you're doing something wrong and you're going to destroy your throat doing that but again as I said before I'm not the best person to give advice because I really don't know what's going on in here It just sort of happens. Mm, but that that is, I think, the best advice almost you can give because if if you <clears throat> like your body is the instrument, so it's another thing. Like with a guitar, uh, if you get some damage on it, you know maybe you can repair it or whatever. But if you get damage here, it uh, becomes quite hard to repair that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was good advice, and I would like to thank you for giving your time and some nice answers. And Samuel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye. See you, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice you day, too. man. You too. Bye.